Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. I'm Chris Horner, and today I want to finish off this weekend's racing at Valencia and Etola Basage. Now, Etola Basage and Valencia has been the Trek Sega Fredo dominant show because they got both leaders at both races. Giacone down in Spain, who's won a stage wearing the race leader's yellow jersey, and then at Etola Basage up here in France, Skilmos just dominated the stage yesterday on the summit finish there with Nielsen Palace holding on for second place. So it's a tight battle when we're talking about Etola Besage. And then when you go back south down to Valencia, it's a super tight battle back there because we're talking about, I don't know, 10, 15 guys all with a shot at winning the overall classification down in Valencia. And then up north in France, we're talking about a three-way battle possible with Skilmos, Nielsen Palace, just four seconds apart from each other, and then we're talking about Pierre Latour. He's about 20 seconds back. So with a 10.6 kilometer time trial up in Etola Besage and a two kilometer climb to the finish, it's a beautiful time trial course and anything can happen at both races. Now let's focus on Etola Besage because that was the first one I saw this morning. And if Trek Segafredo want to win both races, it has to start up in the north. Up, up in France, in the north of Europe, because Skilmos has to do a job all on his own solo with no teammates. Nothing like we saw in yesterday, stage four, where he had three teammates wrapped around him and then a beautiful job going up the final climb. Now, when I turn on the cameras, it's Mads Pedersen. He's in the hot seat. He's got a time of about 1525, if I remember correctly, and he flew all the way to the finish. And then behind him, it's a couple EF education. Stefan Bissinger's there, Magnus Court Nelson's right there. And it looks like it's gonna be the EF education Trek Segafredo show. And then all of a sudden, we start seeing some Enos riders coming in because Josh Tarling, the 18 year old for Enos, who won every individual time trial he did last year, including the, the TT World Championships for the juniors, He's dominated, now he crosses the line to bump off EF Education and go into second place. Only losing about eight seconds to Mads Pedersen from Trek Segafredo. Now the next guy to come across is gonna be Ben Tulet. He's gonna to take a third place on the stage for Enos 2 and that'll bump the EF Education riders out of sight. Now we start getting down to the big GC battles as we start seeing Pierre Latour leave the ramp. He's looking fantastic. He's hot on the pedals, driving it hard. Next guy to go off, Nielsen Palace for EF Education. Remember, he was solo on yesterday's finish and climb until it was Skillmost that caught him and then just jumped him with about 150 meters to go and ran it all the way to the line to take the hot seat here. So that means the last rider to go off, Skillmos, he's got to put on a show if he's going to win the overall classification and try to dominate for Trek Segafredo because Mads Pedersen's in the hot seat still when we're talking about getting down to these final GC favorites. Now, Pierre Latour's flying up the last climb, and this was a beautiful course, like I told you, the kind I really enjoyed. Super narrow, technical, tight 180s, and then when you come into the final two kilometers, it's all uphill to the finish. So I was really digging this beautiful individual time trial course, and so was Pierre Latour, because with about, 100, about 300 meters to go, he's just about a minute back, and he's flying up the finish. He'll come up to the finish line and he'll finish into the top 10 to slot into fifth on the general classification, 15 seconds off of Mads Pedersen time. Now you know this is a solid time. And now the other two on the general classification have something to battle for if they wanna keep their position or move up and win the general classification. Now, Nielsen Palace is throwing down two. He's doing a solid ride. When we see him come up to the line, question is, can Nielsen Palace hold or take over first place for the general classification here at Atola Besage? Well, there's only one guy left on the course, right? It's Skilmos, and Skilmos won last year at Luxembourg to win the overall classification in the individual time trial. So we know the kid can time trial. He's going hot on the pedals. He comes out of the final left hairprint as he starts sprinting on the pedals, trying to get him all the way to the line, and he loses Itolo Besage by just one second to Nielsen Palace from EF Education. That means Trek Segafredo, they get highs and lows, right? They lose the general classification here at Atola Besage, but let me remind you, it's Mads Pedersen that wins the stage five here, but loses the overall classification skill most does. So it's bittersweet, and that's what sports is always about, highs and lows. But
but that's okay. We still got another bike race heading down south in Valencia, and it's Giacone. And I told you guys yesterday on Beyond the Coverage, Giacone just has to keep everything together and keep it all nicely compact together with all your teammates around you and bring it into the final sprint and let the sprinters do their job and win the stage and take the time bonuses. But when I turn on the film, I'm a little bit, probably about 35 kilometers to go from the finish. And then I had to back the film back up and watch it from the beginning because I knew it was going to be exciting. It's a 93 kilometer stage, two climbs on the stage, both of about five kilometers each. First one, not so difficult, but the second one is very hard. Just under five kilometers and just over 9%. So it's going to be the hardest climb during the week in Valencia for the riders. But like I said, it's a short stage, 93 kilometers, and it's going to summit with about 40 kilometers to go. So we're not that far into the race when these guys hit this climb. Bora Hans, girl, though, Vlasov's team, he's got other ideals on today's stage. He's going to blow it up. He's not sitting first, second, or third on the podium, and he's one of the best climbers in the world and GC riders in the world. So Bora Hans, girl, go to work on the second climb. They start stringing out the field, blowing everyone up. There was three riders up the road, Batistella from Astana, who had to go solo and drop his two breakaway companions because he knows Bora Hans goes coming full gas going up this final climb. So he drops DeMarque and Burrow comes off the first early in that climb. So as Batistella suffering at the front trying to hold off the big time charge from Bora Hansgrove back there. You will see him. He's at the limit. Finally, as we go back to the GC favorites, guess what? After Bora Hansgrove's domestiques finished at the front, it was time for Vlasov to go to work. He's still got about 2K of the climb left and he's throwing down with everything he's got. He's blown this race up to pieces. But Ciccone Trek Segafredo, the wily rider, he's always a little cheeky, a little cagey. I like the guy because he wins big bike races and he does it without having the best form in the group. But today looks like he's got spectacular form because Vlasov's not even opening up an inch worth of space between the back wheel of his and the front wheel of Ciccone. Now we look third on the wheel there. Guess what? It's Enos Tail Gegenhart, the 2020 Giro champion. He's locked on too and there's three riders going up the road. Difficult scenario right now for Ciccone because the race is blowing up. He's got no teammates around him. What can he do at this moment? Well, he's doing exactly what I do. Sit on, don't take a pull, and stay there for as long as you can. Now, we go further up the climb as we start to see a few other riders coming back on there. It's our endsman, and our endsman is Enos rider, teammate, of course, of Teo Gegenhart. So Enos get two riders up there, Pale Bill Bow finds his way up there, Bahrain victorious. And then all of a sudden, over the top of the climb, we see as they caught Batistella near the summit, now the group starts getting a little bit bigger, but still the only guy willing to really ride 100% on the front is Vlasov. Our endsman throws in a little bit of work, so they're going to get caught by a few more guys back there because it's going to be Antomarche Rui Costa, the ex-road world champion from 2013 who's already won this year. He finds his way back up to the front group. Rui Costa's happy to be there. Soler found his way up while going up the climb, so he's in there for UAE Team Emirates, and guess what? His teammate Brandon McNulty, the American, found his way on just on the descent along with about the time that Rui Costa was. Now we got a solid group up front, but still is sitting on because he's been in the break all day long. Ciccone, Trek Segafredo, race leader's yellow jersey, calm, never taking a pull, always causing just a little bit of flow problems up there at the front, but realistically, nobody wants to do big work. Now as they come off the climb, the guy's chasing when we back the film up. There's some threat back there because Mikhail Landa and Damiana Caruso, who won the Giro a couple years back, these two are chasing, but they got some company because they got Carlos Rodriguez Enos sitting on the wheel, not wanting to do anything. Torsten Tarin, their Uno X, he found his way onto that group. And guess what? DeMarque. DeMarque was originally in that break, got dropped from Batistella going up the climb. Now he's got a chance to get back in this race. They're only about 30, 40 seconds back from the front group with, of course, Bahrain victorious pulling full gas. And let me remind you, it's Pale Bill Ballas in the front group. Pale's not working too much. There's a little bit of chemistry problems up there with, of course, the race leader's jersey, Giacconi sitting on. Pale Bill Ballas not really pulling through. But the other guys, they're kind of coming through, but not so much. So Vlasov and, of course, our endsmen are still doing the majority of the work up there in front. And there's a chemistry problem happening up front. 
Now we got to back the film up a little bit further too, because when we go to the third group, it's about 20 guys in this third group, and we got Bahrain victorious. They're trying to pull everything back together because finally the two riders, Mikhail Landon and Damiano Caruso, get tired of Carlos Rodriguez from Inyo sitting on. Now, when I think about it tactically, I think Carlos Rodriguez should have been doing some pulls, and I agree with the GCN commentators that if he did some pulls, he could get up to that front group, and Carlos Rodriguez is a threat on general classification, and of course, Mikel Landa is, then they can start attacking the race leader, Ciccone, from Trek Segafredo more aggressively into the finish. Instead, they decide to sit up. Bahrain Victorious pull the group together, but they leave Pale Bilbao, of course, in that front group. Now they got five, six guys chasing in that back group of 20. They're going full gas, and the gap is coming down. Now, this is what's crazy. It comes down to about 15 kilometers to go, and then all of a sudden, Bahrain Victorious, once we get under 15 kilometers to go, there's only two guys up front, and there's Bach Molova in that group. So I want to remind you guys, don't forget about Bach Molova. Now, we go up to the front group. All of a sudden, we're under 10 kilometers to go, about 9.5 kilometers to go. We got the time bonus, sorry, the time bonus sprint competition coming up. Three, two, and one seconds up there. And there's a battle because, because of course, when we're looking at Team Enios, Teo Gagenhardt only needs four seconds, right? Giacconi's got to do the sprint for some reason. Giacconi panics. He jumps early. Teo Gagenhardt wins the sprint, brings back one more second on Giacconi. Now there's only a three-second difference between Teo Gagenhardt and Giacconi. Now, to my disbelief, I told you guys, Giacconi was perfect. He was magic. He was doing everything correct up until that sprint time bonus when he jumped early. After that, the riders come across that, that line and Giacconi starts working with this front group. I can't even understand what's going on. Giacconi, what are you doing? Are you a knucklehead? In the group behind, let me remind you guys, Bach Molema's in that group back there, and Bahrain Victorious have five, six guys, and they want a field sprint or time bonuses for Pale Bilbao. But remember, they got Fred Wright. Now they rode stages one, two, three, and four here, so they're riding stage five too. But for some reason, Bahrain Victorious backed off the front somewhere around 15 to 10 kilometers to go, and they weren't riding their whole team on the front. And for some reason, Bach Molema didn't ride on the front either to try to bring this back together. And for some reason, Giacconi up front, who's won all his races by sitting on the group for as long as possible, being a little bit cheeky and the last one to do any big, big moves, and then go and win a stage or go and put himself in the race leader's Tour de France jersey. Now, all of a sudden, he's rotating through with these guys. Giacconi, what are you doing? How are you going to cover everybody? First, guys, the attack's going to be blast off. That's going to get covered by Pale Bill Bow at about 3.5 kilometers. After that, we're going to see Mark Soler from UAE Team Emirates attack, but he's going to be covered by Teo Gagenhardt. Pale Bill, sorry, not Pale Bill Bow, but Chaconi covers Teo Gagenhardt, of course, because Teo Gagenhardt's second on general classification, only three seconds back. Now, with about 2.2 kilometers to go, we're coming into a right turn. And guess what, Enios do? Man, they made a mistake not having Carlos Rodriguez close the gap with the two Bahrain Victorious riders, but now Teo Gagenhardt's going to make a big, big mistake along with our Ensman at this right corner. Our Ensman's the next rider to attack. He's down on general classification. Our Ensman, what are you doing? Teo Gagenhardt only needs three seconds. He's already beat Giacconi in the sprint. So if you're given odds, it's 50-50, your best chance to win the general classification. Our Ensman, just pull Teo Gagenhardt to the line. Let them sprint out for time bonuses and roll the dice and see what happens. Instead, our Ensman throws in attack. He gets a bit of a gap and Rui Costa from the left side of the road. He throws in this massive attack. He comes flying right by our Ensman who really can't close the gap. We see in the picture the gap's open. There's about four bike lengths there. Our Ensman's suffering like crazy. We see Rui Costa looks back. He, all of a sudden, our Ensman closes up just before one kilometer to go. Rui Costa goes over the last little bump here, flies down into the last left-hand corner, does a quick look over his shoulder, and after that, Rui Costa knows there's no reason to look over my shoulder again. I'm going full gas to the line. He lays it down on the pedals, wins today's stage, and takes the race leader's overall general classification because Ciccone comes across the line too far back in about fifth place on today's stage. will lose first place in the general classification. So Trek Segafredo win today up north 
for the stage that is Mads Pedersen in the individual TT, but they lose both the general classification here in Europe when we're talking about Valencia and Bastage because Rui Acosta threw in a massive attack. Now, there was some kind of dilemma happening in the back chase group trying to come back up to Rui Acosta and some kind of crash or mechanical that I didn't catch it on film, so I don't know what it was, but Teo Gagenhart didn't finish with the race leaders as they crossed the line. They had him way back on the general classification, losing almost a minute. Later into the stages, I'm watching the reports about 20, 30 minutes later, all of a sudden we see that Teo Gagenhart's had some kind of issue. We'll get the same time as Ciccone. So Ciccone gets second on the general classification, and Teo Gagenhart rounds out the podium here at Valencia. Great racing today up in Europe. I hope you guys like my take. I hope you guys can, can agree. Now, when it comes to the tactics down in, in Valencia, it's a bit complicated, right? You'd have to be almost Sherlock Holmes to get the exact right tactics. But Trek Segafredo failed because they should have waited for Bach Mollema in that group. If he comes there, Bach Mollema's only got to ride 10 kilometers on the front, keep it all together. With Bahrain Victorious, who you know want Fred Wright to win the stage in the sprint and possibly Pale Bilbao can do something with some time bonuses. But we all know it. that's an if, buts, and then ends and all that kind of stuff. So when I look at Bora Hansgrove, their tactics were fantastic. They had nothing to lose. Vlasov was amazing. His teammates put in big time dig. Rui Acosta entered Marche, bridging across on the descent after suffering up that climb. You were fantastic. And when I start looking at UAE team members, same thing. Those two boys, Brandon McNulty and Solaire, they did a good job to get back up there. And they had nothing to lose to just to work a little bit in that group and see if they could win the stage. But Inos, you guys failed. Carlos Rodriguez should have worked to get up in that front group. And RN Smith, man, that's a knucklehead move. You left no chance whatsoever for Teo Gagenhart to be able to win time bonuses sprints if you're going up the road and taking time bonuses away from Teo Gagenhart on this last stage of Valencia. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I love when knuckleheads are out there because it's the best racing, most exciting because it's always unpredictable. But I'll see you guys on the next edition real soon. Like and subscribe. See you then.